Oh, hello, I'm your local representative from the party, and I'd like to talk to you about our policies, which include... Um, are you Mr. Uh, Policino? Hi. Yeah, yeah. A fine Italian name. Yes. But uh, that's not my name, that's my internet handle. No, 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 that was, that was given to me by a friend for, from the university from Rome and it just kind of stuck. Roman, you say? Have you been there, across the Rubicon? I think it's the, um, uh, the, the Rubicon's at Ravenna and it's the Tiber that goes through Rome, but I don't know, it's not, it's not, it's not really my culture. Oh, of course I understand, you are Irish. The salt of the earth, or of the peat, as I would say. Oh, that, no, well, Part, it's partly a little bit, I mean, but I'm also like a part Welsh and part Scottish and part French, which I guess is for the Celtic nations. Um, but I mean, I can't deny that I was born in England to working class parents. And while I don't think that defines me, um, you know, I think we're defined by where we're going rather than where we've come from. That is part of Strapping my... Strapping and vigorous in English it is. Of course. The finest of people producing the finest of literature for our Victorian age. Why, there's... Oscar Wilde and Bram Stoker. There's a particular science behind politics and that's called political science. And while politics is supposed to be all about policies and legislation and representation, voting, the mechanic behind a democracy, is much more about mathematics and demographics and rules and boundaries and systems. And there are winners and losers. Why, it's almost like a game. Tammany Hall is about the most cynical aspect of politics. It's about winning the numbers, winning just about enough that you need and not really anything more. It's the second half of the 19th century and immigrants are arriving in Lower Manhattan. And as immigrants do, they're bringing their wonderful diversity and their talent and, and their labor but they're also bringing their votes. And really, all you care about is their votes because that's exactly what you need to get into office. Now, this is Lower Manhattan in New York, and at the moment it's completely empty, but during a game of Tammany Hall, it very quickly starts to look something like this. Now, all these different colored cubes represent immigrants who have come from different parts of Europe to Lower Manhattan. There's white for the English, there's kind of an orange for the Germans, there's green for the Irish, and there's blue arriving a little bit later for the Italians. Now, what these people want doesn't matter that much to you. Where they're from, little interest, your own policies, forget that. The only thing that matters is making friends with whichever community is most politically convenient for you at that particular point, something that's almost always a matter of geography. And everyone else is trying to do this at the same time, of course. All your political rivals will be jostling for you for the votes of these people who they probably know nothing about. So how do you jostle your political rivals out of the frame before they out-jostle you out of the out-frame? Well, it, it goes something like this. Immigrants arrive here at Castle Garden, looking for new life in the new world. And on your turn, on every turn is one year uh, of game time, you can either find a home for one of these immigrant cubes, putting it in one of New York's wards somewhere, and then you can also drop down one of your agents, political heavies, same ward or somewhere else, or you can ignore the immigrants and just put down two agents where you think they might be most useful to you. However, if you do find a home for someone, if you find home for some of these immigrants, you'll receive a favor token, very small, but very important tokens, same color as the people you housed. Now you wanna hold on to those because those are gonna be extremely important. And so this is how a game of Tammany Hall begins, a little slowly and methodically as you very carefully, very thoughtfully shepherd people about the city, finding them new homes, and also dropping your agents where you think 
they can do the most good. All the time aware, as play goes around and around, all the time aware that the first election is coming. Elections come every four years, every four turns. And to win a ward, well, you don't need to win it by much. You simply win or lose. You just have to make sure you score one more point in a ward than anyone else who's contesting it. You contest it by having an agent there, and you score points by having agents and spending political favour. Hmm. Oh, is it turn number four already? Okay, well, let's look at our first ward right here. Um, the red player's got two agents in the field. Uh, the yellow's only got one. So at the moment, just based on political muscle, the first player, the red player, is winning. However, we've got to think about who lives here. There are some Irish people here, and there are some German people, and some Italian people. Now, the yellow player's got quite a bit of sway with the German community, whereas the red player's got some sway with the English community and the Irish community. But the English community doesn't matter. There are no English people here. What happens now, although the red player's currently winning, is we go to a blind auction, and they commit as many tokens as they want, each worth one point, to see if they can swing the ward in their favour. Now, potentially, this could end up as a draw if yellow commits all their... German tokens and then red commits all their Irish tokens, which probably neither player wants. Or depending on how risky they feel, red could really surge ahead, a yellow could provide a surprise victory. Let's see exactly what happens. Okay, the red player went all in for the Irish vote, definitely got that ward, whereas the yellow player didn't contest. But then maybe they have other battles they can win elsewhere. <sighs> So you can't win them all, but you can win some of them, and picking your fights matters very much. You know which order the wards are going to be resolved in, and so sometimes it's worth holding on to your influence to splurge it later in a battleground that you might not otherwise win after everyone else has exhausted all of theirs, except they may also be doing so. So you score points for the wards that you win. You score points if you win the coveted Tammany Hall in the centre. You score points if you find out you're the overall winner in the mayor. But then after that first election, the political landscape gets just slightly more complicated. Yeah, it's not this plain old numbers game that's just about advantages and disadvantages. No, it's now time to work out who your friends and your enemies are. No more running up and down the streets shaking hands with new residents and kissing babies and high-fiving horrid disgusting little children. Real political rivalry happens now. Now whoever ends up as mayor of this town gets to dish out various jobs, various offices to all of the other players and each of them is a rather interesting job that allows them to do something rather unique whereas the mayor themselves actually doesn't do anything. Mayor, Pfft, you want to be council president because you can lock districts, preventing people or agents getting in or out, or be the deputy mayor and just become constantly, eternally more popular, or just the precinct chairman. I mean, that's a powerful role. You can actually rehouse, move immigrants around, and as the chief of police, you can just get rid of them. Also coming into play, the oily black slander tokens. Play these in a ward, and you can remove an opposing agent, as word gets around of their terrible behaviour. You've just, you've heard the worst things. However, doing this sort of thing does make you a bad person. Unspent slander tokens are worth victory points at the end of the game. You know, Tammany Hall starts off making you think it's fairly simple. You approach that first election, and as I say, things seem kind of straightforward. You know where your advantages are, you know which battles you can press and which ones you can probably win. And yet by the time you reach the third or fourth election, the board is bustling with immigrants of all different nationalities and your rivals have got political offices that directly prevent you from doing the thing that you really need to do to win. And yet the game doesn't really get more complicated. It's only your relationships that do. It's only the amount of possibilities that do. Remember, this isn't a two-horse race, this is minimum three players, maybe five, and all the wards can very often remain up for grabs right until the end of the game, which can remain very close. The interesting thing about Tammany Hall is underlying this, you're still following those same ba very basic mathematical rules, those same simple calculations, 
I have two guys here, you have two, but I have much more English influence. But do I use it? Tammany Hall never runs away from you. No, it's the, it's the other players around the table who run away from you. Oh, I shouldn't get stressed though. I mean, it's only a game. Although, when have you ever heard me say that phrase before? It's only a game. What does that even mean? It's only a game. Still, I should be happy. I am happy. Because Tammany Hall achieves a particular kind of victory. It manages to create a lot of depth and possibility from a very, very simple framework. And that's things that games, many games struggle to do, that many game designers really want to nail that. Look in the manual, there's just one, two, three, four, five, six pages of instructions, some of which is just very clear diagrams. Actually, the whole manual is very clear and I wish more people would do that. Still, while I'm on the sofa and while I'm praising Tammany Hall, which I have quite a lot of praise for, I do want to say one other thing. It was out of print for a while and then it was kickstarted and it has perhaps a certain reputation, a certain mystique. For some people, Tammany Hall is extraordinary and it's not. Tammany Hall is very good. I like it. I recommend Tammany Hall. I don't think it's amazing. I don't think you should believe the hype that exists in some corners of the board gaming world or in some niches on the internet. And there's another thing to be said. It's a good area control game. That's the kind of mechanic we're talking about here of trying to dominate certain areas and, and choose your battles, choose your fights. But it's not the only good area control game. And if you already have one laying around, like, I don't know, El Grande, which is Spanish for the Grande. I don't know if you need Tammany Hall unless you really like area control games and you need another and you already have El Grande, which is Spanish for the Grande, in which case get another because it's a really good area control game. So don't get Tammany Hall if you have El Grande unless you really want more. If you don't have El Grande, it's probably the area control game to get. So do, um, but what, still on the sofa, don't leave. Uh, also, if you like New York or the 1800s or people, it's probably a reason to... Oh, you're still here. Do you want to help me pack away? Yeah, oh, I thought so. Well, since you're still around, let me say two more things. The first is that the relative simplicity of Tammany Hall, and it's pretty simple, means it's a really good game to get non-board gamers into, something that maybe will nudge a few more people in the direction of the hobby. And who doesn't like nudging other people? Second thing, and don't tell Quinns, is that when you add immigrants to the castle garden part of the board, you pull them out of this bag. They all live usually in this velveteen bag. I don't think Velveteen is a word, but he's been using it a lot for two or three years now. I think it's just a velvet bag, or I think it's a bag made from just material. I don't know what Velveteen is. All right, get out. I have to film the introduction now because of the way that filming works. I'm actually doing the, the first bit last, because filming. Goodbye.